Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. If we strike a chord in your heart, preach it to the next person. If not, send us a message using our various online portals. Welcome to The Advocates on Plus TV Africa. And like we say, five panelists, a cocktail of topical issues discussed from different perspectives with divergent views. But to achieve a common goal, a better country, a more united people and a world of humanity. Today, yours sincerely is firing the first salvo by exposing the ineptitude in our banking system. And by stating the obvious, our banks have lost it. Liberos, who is fresh from Abia, where the queries he raised last week is still raging, is traveling to Niger Republic today, though not just to import fuel, but leadership, as he's talking fuel and leadership importation. Jumoke is continuing from where she stopped last week by querying the government's sincerity at finding the killers of those killed at the Lekki toll gates. She calls it government of fake news, GFN. I hope government won't tag her advocacy, fake news too. Evans is not talking about prison as the only federal government presence in his native Okwani today, but he's calling out the elders in the state and community to look inward for the solution to their problems. I like the fact that he's looking inward also. Last but not the least, Bolahon is thinking like Obama and saying the solution to our problem lies in us and not in some Oyibo country. He admonishes us not to go back to Egypt. Now don't change that channel. We'll be right back if you stay. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome back. Our banks have lost it, and increasingly so. Nigerian banks are becoming porous spaces to transact businesses. Almost everyone has experienced this in the different ways this presents nowadays. We can't continue to be silent. No sooner do folks finish transactions that they get phone calls from hitmen who pose as bank officials. Those hitmen, or if you like, conmen, demand information about one's recent transactions. And once the victim is obliged, their accounts are wiped clean. A friend wrote on his Facebook page, and I quote, these days, People, especially the aged, are getting defrauded and banks look away. How do these skunks get people's phone numbers if not from banks? Now, I think that's a good place to start interrogating these incidents. Bank staff are compromising sensitive details of their customers, including their mobile numbers. It is now commonplace to use ATM machines and money won't be dispensed, yet withdrawals will be made by the bank on your account. The epic battle then begins to get your money back. 
even when one feels the required form as the process demands and provides evidence, getting your money back becomes a mirage. I have lost 20,000 Naira this way. Every week I do reminders, yet my money has not been returned. I'm not alone. There are thousands of Nigerians in this fix. They encourage folks to do online and e-transactions and then say when you withdraw more than three times in a month, outside of your bank ATM machines, they will charge you. I mean, how pragmatic is that? How realistic is it really? The worst is wanting to recharge one's phones with call units or data through a bank app. Money will be deducted and call units will not be credited, sometimes for days, many times never. Again, I have lost more than 10,000 Naira this year alone through this. When I bounced this off a friend, he said, oh, yours is so minimal. His is adding up to 60,000 Naira for such transactions. Even with the so-called code generated by the banks, we have been sold dummies. Spurious and fraudulent bank charges are the order of the day. They continually fleece the people, then declare huge annual profits from this illegality, and then compete with one another in their dubious ways, saying that they're posting profits. What an insult to our collective psyche. A friend says an old generation bank deducted his dormant accounts to zero, and then continued subtracting all kinds of charges, including monthly maintenance charges from the zero amount remaining. How ridiculous. Another case of BVN, bank verification number. Every little thing they're asking for BVN, which is supposed to be confidential, a confidential code to protect your account. They then leave such forms carelessly so that the dubious ones in their midst use such privileged information against such unlucky account owners. Are regulatory bodies not co-conspirators in this matters? Are they not complicit too? Is the CBN as regulator blind and deaf to the complaints from all and sundry? Who will deliver us from these banks? Interesting, interesting dimensions. Um, I, I had an experience with, I mean, not personal experience, someone in my office who got called up, he vol she volunteered unnecessary information, and the next thing, all the accounts were pew. Now, the interesting the thing was that we knew where the withdrawal was made. Of course, the person that made the withdrawal had an account in that bank where he made the withdrawal because the, 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 we could track all that information. We reported that incident. The other bank where the withdrawal take, took place was not willing to do anything. They were not willing. And I didn't quite understand that. This is a fraud on your system. It's something that affects the integrity of your system. And you're not willing to even lift a finger to, to track down that guy. Two things. Um, um, uh, I, like, I like your advocacy. And um, I pray the banks don't come, you know, after you with all their... <laughs> no, they should come because I'll their, give more examples. All their attempts at, um, you know, trying to cover up some of most of these things. It's a general problem. It's not just to the banks. Our regulators here are not doing nothing. True. Um, take for it. Let me give you an example. You travel. I traveled to from um, London to New York, and then we got got family travel. We got there, and two of our bags didn't come with us, and so they apologized to us and told us. In fact, in fact, before we got down, they had already announced that we should come to the baggage section, and that um, two of our bags didn't come by with it. that same two o'clock flight. That it was going to come with the four p.m. flights, and that uh, they apologized and then gave us um, meal tickets, uh, $500 voucher a lot or card stuff. to withdraw money from the ATM for my conveniences. So we left before we got to the hotel by 6, because we had to stop by a family friend's place. Before we got to the hotel, our bags were waiting for us. Hmm. Cannot happen. Why? Because the regulators there they know the implication. In the moment you complain, you pay through your nose. Yeah. But here, your banks would come, and then they will tell you, describe the bag. Check tomorrow. <laughs> then you check, check tomorrow. And Next week. So it's the same thing here. 
you do these things, CBN will be there ready to find the banks and then tell you no. But meanwhile, CBN will freeze, freeze people's accounts. Exactly. Yeah. On account of the fact that they are protesters. protesters. You know, so it is these regulatory bodies that are not doing their job. And that's why most of these banks can do these things and, and go scot free, free and look the other I, way. I, I think that uh, we're increasingly becoming very reckless in the way we go about our customer care delivery and services. Because um, if you look at it generally, we have this attitude of uh, standing on the defensive even when we have failed in our responsibilities. That is the same thing the government does to us. Mm. Uh, when you say fix power, when you say fix police brutality, fix these abnormalities, they will come after you to penalize you to make sure that uh, they shut you down. And that's the same thing the banks are replicating. Okay. Uh, the information they are giving out and all that, people are not really very careful about uh, the way our practices operate. So I think uh, we should do something about our banks because I lost money too, yeah. 65,000 Naira to a bank. Uh, till today I've been calling, they've not, I've issued them pre-action notice. Oh. I'm going to court very soon to recover my Evans, funds. hardly would you find somebody who hasn't lost money if they've been banking in Nigeria for many years. Our next advocacy after answers would be end Nigerian banks. Will, <laughs> where will we keep our money? They will, tell you, <laughs> no, they, will, they will tell you that uh, you compromise your information. Uh, How? You They're the ones compromising within the banks. Yeah. And Nigerian banks, there are NGOs, you know, who are already telling us what to do in terms of writing to them, you know, to get, you know, um, them to stop stealing, in quotes from us. Najumoke, that's the word. It's barefaced stealing. stealing. Customer service and satisfaction should be a tradition and not just a slogan. Well, Liberus takes us on a refinery tour after the break. <laughs> 